we have Robert Brodsky from Newsday here on this week's Long Island News. Hi, Robert. How are you? I'm good. And yourself? Thank you for having me. I'm doing great. So um, I just want to tell the listeners that you have written this story, and I do want to read a little bit about it. Uh, this one right here. Uh, the developers of a proposed $1.5 billion commercial and residential property um, development at the Nassau Hub detail plans Tuesday for a new suburbia that they said could transform 60 acres of vacant blacktop around NYCB Live's Nassau Coliseum into a vibrant, walkable, mixed-use downtown. And I also hear that Northwell Health might also be a tenant there. So tell us a little bit more about that. So what we learned this week was pretty significant in terms of the long-awaited development at the Nassau Hub. First things first, we reported on Monday that Northwell Health uh, was prepared to become the anchor tenant at the Hub. For some time now, the county has needed this uh, this anchor that would uh, spur the uh, expected biotech healthcare development that they were hoping to spur at the Hub. Um, at w- a while back, uh, the Northwell which also has the Feinstein Institute, had um, expressed interest and had signed on to build a center for bioelectric medicine at the hub. But they backed out last year. Mm-hmm. Um, they were citing costs. They were able to tap some money, some $30 million, some state funds, to uh, upgrade their existing facilities. But they uh, were brought back to the table this week, and uh, they want to grow their life sciences sector. So they are prepared to build a 225 thousand square foot innovation center that's going to be located on the uh, southwest portion of the uh, Nassau Coliseum complex right near the Sloan Kettering Cancer Center uh, project which is uh, currently under development there right okay and um, I just want to know that do you know when construction will start on the Northwell um, building do you know when that will start no we don't know that yet there's still uh, a lot to be determined Um, this was just an announcement Uh that they're ready to come on board. There's going to be some land use issues that still have to be uh, finalized. There's funding issues. The Northwell is looking to uh, get some additional state funding. There's about $20 million in state funding available still for this project, but it's going to be a, certainly a way more expensive project than that. The county has said that uh, taxpayers, county taxpayers, are not going to be on the hook for the project. Uh-huh. So uh, it's going to be a mix of uh, public and private funding, but I would not imagine we're we're going to see uh, shovels in the ground at least for, uh, I would venture to guess, probably close to a year. Okay. So, Robert, you probably know this. There have been talks about redevelopment around, I think, ever since they closed Nassau Coliseum, I think even back in 2015. How long do you, if you know, were the ideas of creating this site? Do you know how long they were thinking about well, this? <laughs> well, you could go back 20 years uh-huh. uh, to former County Executive Tom Swazi and former uh, Islander owner Charles Wong in the Lighthouse Project. Uh-huh. You could probably go back even further. But So there's been talk about building at the hub for close to 20 years. Uh, some projects were rejected by the town of Hempstead because they were too dense. The former county executive, Edward Mangano, proposed a referendum in 2011 that would have spent up to uh, $400 million to renovate the Coliseum and build a minor league baseball stadium. That project was rejected by taxpayers. Uh, that's the impetus for sending the Islanders to Brooklyn. Uh, So back in 2015, Mangano proposed, after the Islanders left, transforming the hub into a biotech center. Uh, The uh, studies and statistics had shown that there was uh, a growing market in Nassau County uh, for a life sciences uh, sector. Combining the hub's, you know, ideal location, it's one of the most uh, uh, in-demand locations. It's uh, vacant 60-some-odd acres of prime real estate, mm-hmm. and, it's, and it's, its proximity to Hofstra, to Nassau Community College, to uh, NUMC, to the Zucker School of Medicine, and to a host of uh, major financial districts. It's been uh, in high demand. So it's been about four years close to where they've been looking for this permanent anchor tenant, and they do seem to have gotten that on board, which is the first step in this $1.5 billion plan that would uh, dramatically reshape the hub and reshape uh, Nassau County as we know it. Yeah, and I want to get back into the hub because uh, the hub is not just going to include Northwell Health and Sloan Kettering. It's going to be more stuff. What's also going to be included in the um, in the hub area? I hear also some residential properties as well. 
So we're going to see this 60-acre property. So you think you figure this is about 72 acres in total. Some of that land is obviously occupied by the National Coliseum and its surrounding property. So the developers have planned, in addition to um, uh, the Coliseum, they're going to build two tiered parking garages. That's critical. That's going to have about 3,400 combined parking spots. Why is that important? Because if you build out on the rest of the Coliseum property, you need to replace that parking. If you build up, you certainly have more room to build out. Right. That allows the developers to build 600,000 square feet of office and biotech research space, 500 units of housing, mm -hmm. two hotels, that's in addition to the Long Island Marriott which is already on the property, right? and additional 200,000 square feet of entertainment and what they call experiential retail stores. Those are shops that provide more than just you know going into a shop and buying a sweater, but uh, an experience of some sort, a cooking class or yoga class of some sort. And I was reading through your article that these residential properties are geared towards millennials. Why do they want to gear it towards millennials and not another generation? Well, they've, from what we can hear from uh, the two uh, developers in charge of the property, they say that that, that the uh, the younger generation market has been sort of uh, forgotten. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we've heard for years that young people can't afford to live in Nassau County. We certainly have we certainly have uh, homes on both sides of the economic scale uh -huh. uh, in that area, even. Um, but we don't have much about. Uh, uh, geared strictly for young people. Now, this is going to be a very um, unique style of housing, m more familiar, I guess, to dorm room housing. So they're like sweet like apartments. I guess the uh, millennials call them micro apartments. So uh, an individual would rent essentially your private bedroom, but then you'd share common areas kitchens, living rooms, potentially even a bathroom. Mm -hmm. um, this is, you know, familiar to anyone who's gone away to school and shared a dorm room, but obviously it certainly allows you to uh, get more people into, uh, into, a, into a shared common space and uh, certainly makes it uh, certainly more affordable. And they're definitely wanting to gear towards those millennials, especially those that are uh, attending Nassau Community College or Hofstra. That's probably why they're doing that too, right? Would you assume that? I, w I would assume that that's part of it. Um, I think that they, they've done research and they've done studies that show that uh, this is what uh, young people uh, in their early 20s and maybe uh, late teens are looking for, that they're willing to kind of put up with a less space and a, a shared living area. Um, the one of the newest members of the Nassau County Legislator, Joshua Lafasan, who's a twenty-something himself, was preaching the importance of going down this direction. So that there seemed to be a demand. Uh, I can't claim to uh, to be super familiar with this style of living, nor would I uh, necessarily jump on board myself. But uh -huh. uh, the these guys are who I proposed it have certainly done their research, and they said there's certainly a market for it. Okay, and now I probably. I don't think you know this, but is there a price tag to it? Do you know how not much yet. it'll cost? Okay. Not, not yet. They haven't gone that far. And I would imagine that Will in addition to... There's, we, have, we are now at, at pretty much the starting line okay. of the approval process. So there was a presentation to members of the county legislature on... Tuesday. Uh, from there, we're going to probably see a vote that would allow the developers to go forward, start making their plans to start inking deals with um, retailers and entertainment companies, um, and to start the development, start the planning process. That's going to happen probably in December. If they get approval then, you're still looking at about another year to 18 months before you get a shovel in the ground. There's uh, going to be land use approval process. There's going to be uh, uh, questions about traffic studies and mm -hmm. environmental. Uh, what we will not expect to hear is any kind of variance 
or zoning change to the town of Hempstead. Apparently, the plan, as initially proposed, does comply with the town's uh, strict zoning variances. So it's all going to be inside the property as of right now, the Nassau Coliseum, which is just vacant blacktop, pretty much. That's correct. Okay. They they look at this as kind of a its own self sustaining community, uh, a walkable district where you could spend the entire day, uh, where you could where I guess if you would live there you could wake up you can go get a cup of coffee and a sandwich go to work see a show at night there's going to be a small concert venue in addition to the Coliseum where they're looking to attract and bring back uh, Long Island athletes actors, performers of uh, different types. So they're looking to make this a, a village-type community, which is something we are not really familiar, with, certainly not a self-contained village within Nassau County. Yeah, I kind of like to compare it to it's it's like a town in a town, pretty much. Right, and given the fact that it's uh, separated from uh, much of the rest of the surrounding property by Hempstead Turnpike and by uh, the Meadowbrook Parkway, it's not as if you could just kind of wander through. You really do have to, to drive up to it. It's not going to be the kind of thing where, you know, for example, being in, down, in Manhattan or in downtown Baltimore or Philadelphia where you can just kind of stroll through the downtown. It is going to be a place where you have to uh, pick up and drive to it. But uh, they do seem to have a vision for it. Mm-hmm. Now, anyone who's followed this will will know that there were plenty of other developers who had visions for the hub, and uh, none have come to pass so far. Now, I heard in the I was reading your article, and it said that they want to have pedestrian bridges that cross from uh, the hub to Hofstra and Nassau Community College. That's correct. This county is seeking about twenty million dollars in additional state funding. Those would be three pedestrian bridges. That's going to connect the hub, so that's be the Greater Coliseum property to RXR Plaza, which is directly right across the street. They're actually envisioning that that's going to be used as additional parking, um, both during the construction of the hub and for events. A second pedestrian bridge to Hofstra and a third to Nassau Community College. That's uh, critical in terms of getting foot traffic to the property, which, as we now know, is, is still very difficult. Some would say even particularly dangerous. Right. The county is also seeking 10 to $20 million from the state for what they call a bus rapid transit system. So this would be uh, a way to connect the uh, people to from the, both the Mineola and the Hempstead Long Island Railroad stations to the hub. Right now, obviously, one of the big impediments to development for the past 20 years at the hub has been the fact that there is no public transportation that corrects directly there. Right. There are bus stops uh, on the nice bus route, but outside of that and your Uber, it's pretty much a vehicular traffic vehicular traffic uh, location. Okay, now I want to ask you this question. Now you got you're saying that this is very positive are uh, are some people like the general public people from Uniondale have they ever come to you and said that or you if you ever sit through any of the meetings do they not like this idea This has yet to go before members of the greater Uniondale East Meadow uh, Hempstead community. These details are are now just coming out for the first time. I would imagine there are going to be concerns, as there always are, about traffic in Mm -hmm. the greater area. There's going to be questions about uh, infrastructure. Can the Meadowbrook Parkway sustain it? The big thing to consider, though, is the Nassau Coliseum is already there. It's actually somewhat smaller than it was uh, five years ago. So the main draw to get individuals onto the property has not changed. That said, one thing that will be critical to get approval from uh, some of the surrounding uh, county legislators is signing a community benefits agreement. That's going to be some sort of financial incentive that uh, members of the local community, whether it's through civic boards or chambers of commerce, directly through um, uh, the legislative offices or whatnot, where there is some benefit provided for this, some call it intrusion into their neighborhood. So typically there is some sort of financial benefit in addition to job uh, offers, um, you know, offering members of the Uniondale community uh, an ability to apply first for certain positions on the property, uh, apprenticeships, 
Mm -hmm. internships, um, but typically what they're looking for is some kind of financial compensation as well. Okay, so uh, Robert, thank you so much for calling in, and I do thank you for informing me and definitely the audience for this, and uh, hopefully we'll see shovels, um, let's see the breakdown probably in the next 18 months, as much as you say. (laughs) We shall see. I'm sure we'll talk again soon. Definitely. Thank you, Robert, for calling in. Take care. All right, bye. All right, that was Robert Brodsky from Newsday, and he was talking about the Nassau Hub that was going to be developed around Nassau Coliseum. If you want to learn more about that article, you can visit Newsday.com.